he was the one taking the shots for it, seemed like he's vacillating, even though everything he said may be intellectually uh, proper. And it may be everything that Ted Cruz wanted to say and possibly frame it differently. But now Ted Cruz doesn't have to say, I agree with Rand Paul. Paul is capitulating to Cruz. Cruz is looking like the smarter person. Cruz is looking like the candidate. Paul is looking like the supporter of the candidate. That's what it looks like right now. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to try to get Mona Salama on the line with us from Las Vegas as the debate's going on. Gene Berardelli behind enemy lines. We'll be back right after these brief words. I'm Vito. And I'm Vito. And we're from WNJC's The Vito and Vito Show. Every Friday at 1 p.m., you can hear Vito and Vito bring you the perspectives of two college days millennial conservatives who are committed to defending the principles of free markets, liberty, freedom, and individualism from Brooklyn, New York. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Vito and Vito Show, and check out our blog posts and articles at VitoandVito.com. Vito and Vito Show, every Friday, 1 p.m. on WNJC 1360 AM, Philadelphia's Renaissance Station. In Brooklyn, it's nothing but the truth. There's a movement in healthcare today. It's a movement of people that's ready to stand up and take charge of their healthcare. It's people like you and me, who are tired of paying too much for healthcare and getting too little. People who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make decisions based on timeless principles. It's a movement that's sweeping the nation, and you need to be a part of it. Liberty HealthShare is leading the movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty HealthShare is a healthcare sharing organization of people who are sharing the cost of healthcare in an easy and efficient way. Choose your own doctor, your own hospital, and live out your values in healthcare. Join the movement. Together, we're changing healthcare for good. Go to www.joinlhs.com or call 800 722 8041. Who might you save? Your mother, your father, your husband, uncle, aunt, son. Learn fast. F-A-S-T. The sudden signs of a stroke and you could save. Your friend, teacher, boss. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. F-A-S-T. That's F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in the recovery of... Your neighbor, the waiter, grandmother, grandfather. So learn F-A-S-T, the sudden signs of a stroke. Then pass it on, because you never know who might save you. Your wife, your colleague... Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Behind Enemy Lines. Back on the air. Jean Berardelli, back behind enemy lines, and on the line with me right now, we're bringing her in live from the debates in Las Vegas. Politichick and behind enemy lines contributor, Mona Salama. Mona, are you there? Hey, well? uh, everything is great here. Uh, where exactly are you in the, the Venetian? Oh, I'm in the Sands Expo close by. They put us like literally like a mile away from where the theater is at. Okay, all right. So now, uh, have you been able to uh, get the mood of what people are thinking about the debate right now? Who's got the edge? Uh, who's up? Who's down? Well, basically, from what I'm catching, I'm catching the same way as everybody else is. I'm watching live on TV. Um, there's a lot of brand poll supporters there. So I'm catching mostly, like, the reporters. And they're having a field day with um, Trump and, like, um what you call it, Cruz and Rubio going after each other, and um, Cruz and Rubio and Rand Paul going after each other. So it's like a senator's fight. Right. Now, is there anything about Trump versus Jeb as well? Yes, everybody's, like, laughing about that as well. I, forgot, I totally forgot about Jeb. But the best now, thing does... that, like, you know... So does it seem well, like Jeb and Trump is the sideshow and the real battle is amongst the senators? Okay, you know what? That's the same thing that we're seeing back here in the People's Republic of New York City on Twitter as the debate goes on. Uh, yeah. Did you get any sense of, you know, 
did anyone have that moment yet that we always talk about the moment on the debate where you say that's where a candidate is made? Have you seen that yet? No, no, not to, not this debate. I don't see it at all whatsoever right now. Maybe I think there's like another 31 minutes left, so we'll see what happens. But I haven't seen anybody, you know, catch the attention. So I, I expect, you know, some poll numbers to stay the same, some to creep a little bit, but I expect, you know, a few to drop after this. It seems like on Twitter that everybody is talking about this being a very good night for Ted Cruz. Do you see it differently, that this is not as big of a night as people think? I think it's not the biggest that he's had so far, but it's, you know, it's going to keep up his momentum that he's letting everybody know that, like, Rubio is the one who supported, you know, Chuck Schumer and the gang at April. He's reminding everybody this, you know, we're left than 55 days to the um, Iowa caucus. And now where, where everything is going on, I heard what happened back home in New York. So he's letting everybody know, listen, you know, Rubio supports this and this and that, and I don't support that. So it's going to keep up, you know, um, Cruz's momentum, but Rubio um, is not um, defending why he defended those positions. So Rubio is a little slacking there. Okay. One of the other battles that we haven't really talk, talked about is the low blow that Rand Paul took on Chris Christie, again, those two, they always seem to go at each other. This time, Rand Paul making reference to the Bridgegate scandal that Christie went to. Was there any reaction in the press room when that uh, when that was brought up? No. The, I would say the biggest reaction that the press had laughing about is when, uh, what you call it, Donald Trump said, hey, I'm the one that's 42% and you're the one that's 3%. You're a tough guy now. I think they caught that momentum, but they didn't catch the momentum with the bridge gate as much. They're not really laughing about that, but they're really more focused on the senators fighting with each other. Well, that's really interesting. Uh, it seemed like Twitter had some reaction to Rand Paul. Uh, uh, let's talk about Rand Paul for a second right now. Is this his best debate performance yet? Yes. I would say he's coming out full swinging, and he's letting everybody know how tough he is. The libertarian movement is coming out for him. So uh, this is like one of the best nights he's ever had, but we'll see when the numbers come out. Right, because as we've seen with Cauley Fiorina, you can have a good debate night, and if you don't have the follow-through at the end with the money and the people, it doesn't really do anything for you. And and yeah. Rand Paul seems to be in a debate for his life right now, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Rand Paul is like right now on like 3% nationally, 4% nationally. He's doing okay in New Hampshire, okay in Iowa, but yeah, he's on fighting for his life right now. Now let's talk about some of the other participants uh, the names that we haven't talked about. Notably, we haven't talked about Kali Fiorina. Is she just not getting the airtime? Is CNN no. passing her by? Well, yeah, of course CNN is going to pass her by because she has, she's not going to attack anybody. But one thing that's really surprising me right now with Kali Fiorina is that she's playing the woman's card. She's acting like Hillary Clinton, you know, bringing up what Margaret Thatcher once said, ask a woman about this, and then saying, like, I've been called uh, the B word so many times, like it's a bad thing. That's just my opinion. But anyways, you know, I think she's playing the woman card too much, and I don't think it's going to resonate with the Republican voters because, you know, they don't like to hear, like, the sexist things that Hillary Clinton says. So that's going to probably hurt her. But as for her, like, attacking um, the CNN moderators for not getting the airtime, um, I saw the press people were just like, yeah, shut up. Just who cares? Nobody really cares anymore about her, to be honest. Has the time for whining in general just passed? I, I saw that there was a lot of hemming and hawing about Donald Trump doing the same thing. Is it past the moment of, I'm not getting enough time? Are people done with that line? Yeah, pretty much. People want to hear, want to see fights between what you have done before in your past, what legislation you have passed, um, or if you're not a, cat, uh, a politician, what makes you better than me, things like that. They really want to see a throw down with each other. They don't want to see a throw down because I'm not getting any airtime. That's past. You're not going to get enough airtime as a lot of people because either one, you don't have the poll numbers, or two, nobody's interested in you. So nobody's going to give, you know, Carly all the questions as if they're asking Ted Cruz and then they ask Marco Rubio, then they'll ask Rand Paul. They'll go back and forth, back and forth. Right. So now, first of all, how are they treating you there? How has been the uh, the access and, you know, go, getting around and talking to people? Um, I haven't been able to talk to, um, how do you say, quote, unquote, civilians, because technically I consider a reporter, press, so I haven't been able to talk to non-reporters, 
because they're very far away from me. But, um, you know, RNC took over the media credentials. It's beautiful here. Facebook has a, a little mini lounge here. They're giving out, like, selfie stick, stickers, free stuff. The food here is amazing. They treat us right. It's just the Wi-Fi is horrible. As it always is with these mass events when everybody's trying to log on at the same time, right? Uh, the the yeah, life like of a cream. traveling reporter. <laughs> I love it. I love living off my suitcase. Yeah, and you've been put, you've been logging in the miles for us and for Politichicks and doing a great job at it. You know, we've yeah. talked about everybody else's perceptions. I want to get your perceptions. Let, let's go down the line for each candidate. Start at Trump. Work your way down. Give me a brief description of how you think everyone's doing. Um, Trump is doing Trump. He's doing good. You know, he's letting everybody know I'm number one and nothing's going to touch me. So that's Trump. Cruz is doing, you know, his best. Um, he's um, letting everybody know about Rubio. So he's on full swing. I wouldn't say it's his best, best performance of tonight as opposed to the other four debates, but he still keeps his own momentum. Rubio, not the strongest, but he, he's really good. at He knows his foreign policy. He, he's very sharp on that. I just wish that he could defend his actions of when Rubio and Cruz attack. I'm um, not Rubio. I mean, Cruz and Paul attack him. That's the only downfall is that he does not know how to go swinging or he does not know how to defend himself on that. Um, Carly, she, I, I expect her to be back if there is an undercard debate next month with either two debates where they're going to have in January. I expect her to be returning there. Cause she just blew it with the whole playing the woman card issue. Um, Rand Paul, excellent. He's doing his best to stay, keep the momentum alive. Um, Kasich, he's quiet. I'm surprised that he's not like repeating what he did last um, debate of um, let me talk, let me do this. I'm um, trying to interrupt people. He's actually like, you know, stay in your lane type moment. And Chrissy um, is letting people know that he's still around. There's not really much where you could talk about Christie. Yeah, the one thing I think I'll add about Christie is that it seems like he has really stolen the Giuliani playbook. He's talked yeah. about 9-11. He's talked about being an executive in the Northeast and talked about how to work with people and how to execute decisions, really to separate himself from the Cruz, Rubio, Paul, legislator model that they've been... T- vacillating about if if, to use his words and making everybody Mm -hmm. you know too wonked out about legislation and all that is that a way for christy to distinguish himself i'm an executive you all have never made a decision yes and no because he could remind everybody that he's a a governor right now a sitting governor he has um um prosecutor experience um he's trying to have like a different momentum that like he's not saying like i'm just a uh, governor, he's trying to say that I have X, Y, and Z. So he's trying to back it up. At the same time, play like you know, I've seen a terrorist attack even if he was a bridge away. Uh, I just think that he can't play the whole like I've been there, done that. Like if he was from New York, something that I would expect um, Pataki to do, but Pataki doesn't know what he's doing. But it's playing to his favor because as you can see, in New Hampshire, he's leading with all the facts. All right, that's some great analysis from Mona Salama, a regular contributor to Behind Enemy Lines Radio. And with Politichicks, check out Mona's uh, Twitter feed. Uh, You need to see uh, what's going on with that as she is there. And basically at all times, Mona has a lot of great news and views to give to everybody. But I think the thing that made Mona and I probably geek out the most was the uh, Frank Underwood commercial during the debate and how House of Cards is coming back on March 4th. Right, Mona? Well, actually, we don't get commercials here because we actually have a live feed. Live feed. Oh, that's right. Days. You have the live have, feed. Like, yeah. Have. Yeah. So we don't get. But I found out through somebody, and I had to tweet it out that breaking news. So like, I had to let you and Amanda, Kohar, other contributor, know that hey, let's say this is real news. House of Cards is coming back the same time during CPAC. Go figure. Very interesting timing, isn't it? Listen, Mona, yeah. go back to work. Thank you so much for giving us this really cool insight into the reporter's life behind the scenes at the debates. It's very, very cool of you to do that. Take time out to do that for us. And we'll talk to you when you get back. All right, Mona Salama, you're the best. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks. And uh, we'll catch up with you later in the week.
And right now, folks, 